Suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. Some years ago, Ernest Hemingway's great short story, The Killers, was made into a movie. Anyone who saw it will never forget the menace and brutality of the two gunmen in the opening sequence. Two nastier heavies have rarely been seen together on the screen. Feeling that their type of tough guy should not be allowed to languish in limbo, we have brought them together again in a rather different kind of story, yet still a story of heavies. Listen, listen then, as William Conrad and Charles McGraw star in Two for the Road. Where are we now, Joe? Uh, you've been asleep. <sighs> yeah. Where are we now? Uh, I don't know for sure. Some place in Arkansas, I think. Sure is a big country, ain't it? Yeah. Hey, you want me to drive? No, I'm all right. You got some more sleep, huh? I got enough. Sure you're all right? Uh, we'll be a little groggy. We'll stop in the next place for coffee, and you can take it from there. Okay. Hey, what time is it? Must be past midnight. You know, I keep wondering. Yeah, wondering what? Ah, if we're doing the right thing, cutting out like this. What else could we do? New York is dead. Uh, Chicago? Yeah, New York. You think the coast will be any better? It's gotta be. There's plenty of action on the coast. I hope you're right. But all we got lined up is that job for Rocky. What about after? Yeah, we do the job good for Rocky, you take care of us. Yeah. When we get there, you think? Well... We come nearly halfway in 24 hours. If we go right through, we ought to make it by yeah, tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, it don't seem possible. It's such a big country. If Rocky wasn't in such a hurry with that job, we could see some of it. Yeah. Nothing between New York and a coast but scenery. Oh, there's Vegas. Yeah, but that's practically the coast. Yeah. You've seen one super highway, you've seen them all. Yeah, cities too. I was in Boston once for a tryout. Nothing. Truck haven. Huh? Uh, joint up ahead there. Well, let's stop for coffee, huh? Yeah, okay. You know what they say, if the truck drivers stop at a joint, the food's got to be good. Well, I don't see any trucks, and all I want is coffee. I can't go wrong on coffee. This place might as well close up for the night. No cars parked outside. And no customers inside. Yeah, there's one. Look at that doll at the counter. Yeah, not bad. What she's doing out here all alone in the middle of the night? Uh, waiting for a bus, maybe. Evening. Hi. Hi. Two coffees make mine black. Yeah, same here. Two coffees. Hey, Mac, what's the matter with your TV? Huh? It's about the lousiest picture I ever saw. Best we can do. We ain't close enough to Little Rock, and we're too far from Memphis. Must drive you nuts all fuzzy like that. You get used to it. Four or five... One, 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 and one of our friendly operators will take your order. If you're Hi, outside the area, Hi. just call... Hi. Hello. Say, ain't I seen you fellas before? We'll I don't know how. We ain't never been here before. Well, neither have I. I'm from Memphis. Well, we went through Memphis this evening. Funny. And now back I'm to the sure I've seen you someplace. No. In New York, maybe. Uh-uh. I've never been east of Chattanooga. Well, we never been west of Weehawken. Well, excuse me for button there. Not at all. I got it all. Hey, Joe. She's not bad, not bad. Yeah, I've seen it better. Yeah, not all the time. What do you mean? Well, Lord said, if magic didn't get to him, I had to use a direct method. Tough. We was running a nice clean operation. Yeah, I knew I'd seen you before. Don't remember how to make the same out of Where? Right there on the TV, ain't that you? Huh? I can't tell through all that snow. Hey, Charlie, look. How about that? It's an old okay, Kenny of the plain clothes. Yeah. Well, that is you, ain't it? Sure looks show. like you. That's yeah, us. Like yeah, but do you mind reaching up yeah. and turning it off? It stinks even when you can see the picture. Gee, you're actors. Yeah. I always watch a program. Ah, glad to know we got an audience in Arkansas. What you fellas doing way out here? Driving to the coast. Hollywood? Yeah, that's right. Hey, you want a lift? Sure. Why? Why not? Well, we, we're driving right through. It wouldn't be very comfortable for Oh, you. I don't mind. I won't take up hardly any room at all. And I don't have any luggage, just this purse. Well, I don't know. I, uh... I got a little money. I'll pay for my share of the gas. Well, it ain't that. It's just... Ah, come on, Joe. Let's give the kid a lift, huh? Oh, 
Charlie, haven't you heard about picking up strangers on a highway? <laughs> you don't mean you're afraid of me. Well, no, but you gotta admit it's a little kook finding a girl out in the middle of nowhere without any baggage, wanting to go to the coast. All right, it's like this. I'm running away from home. Why don't you run back? We don't want your husband gunning for us. Oh, no. I'm running away from my old man and my old lady. Tonight we had a big beef and I walked out. Got a ride out of Memphis as far as here. <laughs> What's so funny? You worry about giving me a ride. I'm the one that's got the worries. This fellow that gave me a lift out of Memphis wanted me to pay for the ride. The price was too high. Why, well, I'm out here in the middle of nowhere. Oh. What a dirty, no good... But you guys don't look like that type. Oh, we're not. So I trust you and I'll accept your invitation. <clears throat> well, okay. You finished your coffee, Lothario? Oh, yeah, sure. All right, let's hit the road, then. In a moment, we continue with the second act of... Suspense. Come on and go, go, go in a Plymouth. A go-car through and through. You really go, go, go for a Plymouth. And Plymouth will really go for you. Fifteen minutes behind the wheel. That's all it takes to convince you that the 59 Plymouths really got it. Got the newest of new design, new sport car handling ease, new fury performance, new get up and go. Just tell your Plymouth dealer you want to sample the go. Then you turn the key and Plymouth's new Golden Commando V8 leaps into life. Now you just push a button and go on your way to the most fun-filled 15 minutes of your driving life. See your Plymouth dealer. Take your fun drive in the 59 Plymouth real soon. You really go, go, go for a Plymouth and Plymouth. We'll really go for you. And now, starring Charles McGraw and William Conrad, Act Two of Two for the Road. <laughs> my way to Hollywood with two famous actors. Oh, we're not so famous. Not famous? Why, I bet the Plain Clothesman is the most popular TV show in Memphis. Everybody knows Joe Harris and Charlie Bloom. You're Charlie, aren't you? That's right. And you're Joe? Yeah. How come you're going to Hollywood? They killed us. We're dead. Dead? Yeah, what Joe means is we got too big for the Plain Clothesman, see? And the star of the show... Hubert Bromley? Oh, I can't stand him. Yeah, well, anyway, he's a star, and he didn't like how big Joe and I was getting, so he had the writers get us killed in last week's episode. Well, that was mean of him. Well, that, that's showbiz. And being as how uh, we was typecast as hoods, we couldn't get any good parts in New York. Actually, Joe and I are pretty serious actors. Oh, I know you are. Yeah, we just look like hoods. That's what I liked about you in The Plain Clothesman. Yeah. Well, we got this pal in Hollywood, Rocky. Rocky Lamont? He used to hang around Walgreens, but he's a director now. And he's got a couple of swell parts for us in a pilot he's shooting. The Three Musketeers. Well, I thought that was a kid show. Musketeers, not Mouseketeers. Oh. That's why we're in such a hurry. Rocky starts shooting day after tomorrow. Say, honey. Yeah, Joe? You got any idea where we are? Mm, I want to be too far from Little Rock. Hey, Joe. Joe, look, must be a wreck up ahead, all those flashing red lights. Police cars. That's a roadblock. They're signaling us to stop. Hey, what do you suppose they want? Who knows? Don't stop, Joe. What do you want me to do? Barrel right through them? Yeah. If you're crazy or something, they'd shoot us full of holes. We'll shoot back. With what? With this. Hey, Joe. Look, she's got a rod. What? Are you nuts? You'll put that out of sight. Help! What's Help! the matter with her? Help! Well, don't ask me. Help! She was your Help! idea. Get over here. Thank heaven you stopped us, officer. These two men are kidnapping me. Okay, they you me two out. Hey, okay, now listen, officer. This broad's flipped. Yeah, we just met her up the road. Ah! Hold your hands up. Aye. Now, look, Sergeant, I'm sure we can explain everything. You better. Now, you, young lady. Hey, Sam. Yeah? The gal ain't here. The door on the other side's open. She must have got out that way. There she is. She's on Jerry Sick. Hey, stop. Stop, I'll shoot. Look out. She's got a gun. Hell of a... Sergeant. Hang on, Bandar. My, how chivalry has fallen in Arkansas. Shooting at women. It'll be children next. 
All right, mister. It's my duty to tell you that anything you say may be used against you. Frisk him, Sam. Right. Where are you from? New York. Where are you going? Hollywood. Yes, yeah, Sergeant, we're just driving through. They're both clean. Mm -hmm. Check them against those descriptions. Are you in Memphis tonight? Yeah. Doing what? Just driving through. Uh, let's see your driver's license. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's gone. My wallet's gone. So's mine, Joe. That broad, she's a pickpocket. Yeah, she stole my wallet. You gotta arrest her. Oh, don't you worry. We'll arrest her as soon as we can catch her. Descriptions fit, Riggs. Mm, so's the car. Blue and white convertible. New York license plates. Check their registration. What's your name? Joe Harris. And what's yours? Charlie Bloom. Whose car is this? Mine. The car's registered to Yus... Yusuf Horowitz. Mm. Now, come again. What's your name? Joe Harris. And that's your car. That's right. And how come it's registered to uh, Yusuf Horowitz? Oh, you see, Joe Harris is short for Yusuf Horowitz. Why'd you steal the car? Look, I didn't steal the car. It's mine. All of it, it's paid up. That's my name, Yusuf Horowitz. Joe Harris is my stage name. That's right, officer. Hey, listen, you don't believe that crazy broad, do you? You don't think we kidnapped her? No, nope, not for a minute. I think she was in this here thing with you from the beginning. I think she drove the getaway car. Get away from what? The holdup of the Cotton State National Bank in Memphis this afternoon. What? Snap the cuffs on him, Sam. Yeah. But, now, look here. You're making a terrible mistake. You haven't got any charges. Oh, yes, we have. Armed robbery and murder. That bank teller you shot died an hour ago. <laughs> In a moment, we continue with the third act of Suspense. It has the fresh, clean scent of pine. It's new. It's, it's at, at your store. store. What is it? It's the best disinfectant anywhere. Kills disease germs on contact. It's Lysol in a new pine scent. Right. Now there's a new pine-scented Lysol. Now your home can be pine-sweet and Lysol-clean with genuine Lysol brand disinfectant. New pine-scented Lysol disinfects, deodorizes, deep cleans kitchen, bathroom, nursery, sick room. Keeps things fresh and sweet with no extra work. Pine-scented Lysol helps guard your home. In laboratory tests, Lysol's anti-germ action kept working for seven full days. So try this new pine-scented Lysol. Make your home... Pine, sweet, and Lysol clean. You can still get regular Lysol, too. And now... Starring William Conrad and Charles McGraw, Act Three of Two for the Road. <laughs> Hey, Tonky! Hey! Knock it off down there. I gotta talk to you. I said knock it off. You got no right to wrap him across the knuckles. I got any right I want to take. Now, listen. Where's the sheriff? I told you I want to talk to the sheriff. I know you did. What did you tell him? Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Now, you can't keep us in jail like this. You're in, ain't you? Where's the sheriff? I wouldn't know. Now, look, listen, we got to get out of here. We got an appointment in Hollywood. You better cancel it. All right, Sam. You can bring in the prisoners. Yes, sir. This way. Sit down, boys. I hear you want to talk to me. You're darn right we do, Sheriff. Well, good. Because I want to talk to you. What about can't you guess? Well, that cop last night said something about a bank robbery in Memphis, but we don't know nothing about it. Yeah, we're just a couple of actors. Well, it looks like you're a couple of bad actors. Look, you can check it. I'm Joe Harris. Yeah, and I'm Charlie Bloom. Yeah, we've been playing a heavies in a TV series of plainclothesmen. Yeah, we were on last night on Channel 2. Well, I don't look at TV very much, but I look at descriptions of wanted men, and you fit the description of the men who robbed that bank in Memphis yesterday. Well, it, that was just a coincidence. Well, is it a coincidence that the girl who was with you last night when you were arrested fits the description of the girl who drove the getaway car at the bank holdup? Yeah, that, that's a coincidence, too. I want to talk to an attorney. You can. Now, we got a right to counsel. You can't hold us I like... I can, and I am. 
Incommunicado for 72 hours, and that's the law. Oh, listen, Sheriff, be reasonable. We got an important date on the coast. We're late as it is. And you're going to be much later. You can't prove that we robbed that bank. Can you prove you didn't? Sure, ask anybody who saw the plain clothesman last night. Yeah, ask that girl. She saw us on TV last I'd night. I'd like to ask her a lot of things. Like, what about the kidnapping? <sighs> Sheriff, there wasn't no kidnapping. She asked us for a lift, and we gave it to her. Well, until so... I question her, we'll, uh, we'll just forget the kidnapping charge, huh? Thanks a lot. But you can make it easier on yourself if you cooperate with us about that bank robbery. Ah, you must be kidding. I don't kid. Now, let's have the story. Look, I told you we're actors. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Well, then act. What? I've got plenty of time. You say you're actors, well, <laughs> go on, act. Will you believe us if we prove that we're actors? Well, I'm not making any promises. The burden of proof lies with you. Hey, Joe, Joe, let me. I'll prove it to him. Remember that closing speech in the plain clothes when it got me the Emmy? All right, you listen to me, copper. You put the roust on me for the last time. I hate cops. I was born hating cops. Uh, Joe. And cops ain't done nothing all my life to make Joe. me like them. I've always no. promised myself that someday Joe. I'd kill me a cop, and today's Joe, a day. Will you, will you shut Let up? him go on. I believe him. Well, I believe every word he said. Oh, go on, boy. What are you going to do after you kill you a cop? Uh, uh, that's all. That's the end of the speech. So you hate cops, huh? Well, that makes us even, because I hate punks. Hey, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. He doesn't mean that. He was acting. He convinced me. That he's an actor? No, that he's a bank robber. All right, listen. Now, if you don't understand Charlie's acting, you listen to this. It's a different kind of actor. Oh, what a rogue and peasant slave am I. Is it not monstrous that this player here, but in fiction and a dream of passion, could force his soul so to his own conceit and all for nothing? For Hecuba... What's Hecuba to him or him to Hecuba that he should weep for her? Well, now, who's this Hecuba? Uh, oh, oh, of course. Hecuba's that broad that swiped that motorcycle. Well, huh? that was from Hamlet, act two, scene two. That was acting. Oh, that was acting. All right, now, are you, are you ready to talk about that bank job? Look, once more, real slow, we don't know nothing about no bank job. Well, like I said, we've got plenty of time. While we're waiting for you to make a confession on that bank robbery, maybe we can find some other charges against you. Oh, but this is crazy. What charges? Well, I don't know yet. Uh, I'll know better after the lineup. Lineup? Yeah, a couple of acting fellas like you claim to be. Oh, my, you ought to enjoy the lineup. I'll put you up there on the stage with the footlights on you, and I'll give you an audience. <sighs> Look, you don't have to do that. That girl, she knows who we are. Ask her. No, I can't. Not know we pick her up. But it'd be nice to have her in the lineup, too, now, wouldn't it, boys? Yeah. That'd add a little sex appeal to your show. Sam? Yeah, Chief. Got anything on that girl yet? Yeah, Chief. A teletype just came in a couple minutes ago. Oh, they got her? We might say they have. Found her an hour ago in a gully north of Greenville. Oh, she didn't get far then. Far enough. She's dead. Dead? Yeah. Guess she didn't know too much about driving a sickle. Skidded the thing right through the guardrail last night. Well, thank you, Sam. You hear that, boys? <clears throat> yeah. Oh, you gotta believe us. I don't gotta do anything. You gotta get a new alibi. In a moment, we continue with the fourth act of Suspense. What bothers you most about a cold? For me, it's the choked up congested feeling. In fact, science now says to clear away most cold miseries, clear away congestion. Sinus congestion that causes headaches. Nasal congestion that shuts off breathing. Throat phlegm with its choking discomfort. Bronchial irritation that starts coughing. Yes, to clear away those cold miseries, clear away that congestion. And now, there's a specialized new medicine to do that. Fast, four-way liquid cough and cold medication. Taken as directed, with the first dose, feel sinus pressure and headache clear. Feel runny nose dry and open up. Breathe freely. Sore throat is soothed. Cough eased. Yes, four-way liquid clears away cold congestion and clears away worst cold miseries. Working through the bloodstream, it reaches all those congested areas. Because it's liquid, relief comes fast. So to clear away cold suffering, clear away congestion with new four-way liquid cough and cold medication. Get it today, only 98 cents. 
And now, starring Charles McGraw and William Conrad, Act Four of Two for the Road. All right, get up there on the platform. Stretch out there, arms length apart. Hit the lights. Wow, wow, they're bright. Yeah, they could use some scrims. Okay, Sheriff, we're ready here. How are we going to get out of this, Joe? I don't know, Charlie. I don't write the scripts. I just act in them. All right, folks. Will you please come in now? That's it, folks. Just take a chair there, anyway. Right there, that's all right. Just sit down right there. Now, that's it. Now, we're holding these men as suspects. Any of them look familiar to you? <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's hard to say, Sheriff. The, the holdup happened so fast. It... Well, maybe if you heard them speak. Uh, what was it that the gunman said to you? Uh, uh, this is a stick-up. Uh, don't move and nobody will get hurt. Something like that. Uh-huh. Well, all right, you men. Now, you men up there, let me hear each one of you say that. That this is a stick-up. Don't no one move and you won't get hurt. <clears throat> Me? Uh, this is a stick-up. Don't no one move and you won't get hurt. <clears throat> next. Uh, this is a stick-up. Don't no one move and you won't get hurt. Yes. Next, man. This is a stick-up. Don't no one move and you won't get hurt. Yeah. Last, man. This is a stick-up. Don't no one move and you won't get hurt. That's him! him. I'll never forget that voice as long as I live. I couldn't see him, of course. It was pitch dark. In the bed? No, in my bedroom. He crept in through the window, and he stood over my bed, and I could hear him breathing. And then he spoke. He didn't say those words, of course. And then I screamed. Uh, yes, well, you can testify to that in court? Oh, yes. Well, thank you, Mrs. It's Hitt. Miss, Miss Freilenhausen. Oh, I see. Well, well, thanks, ma'am. Yes, now, Mr. Johnson. About the bank robber. Well, I, I'd like to hear that second man again. Okay. You, number two. Huh? Speak your piece again. Uh, this is stick up, don't no one move, and you won't get hurt. Well, Mr. Johnson? Uh, yes, I, I'm fairly sure that's the voice. Uh, he was the only one who spoke. That other one there stood by the door and covered him. He was the one who shot the teller. Yes, yes, I'm positive now. There's, there's no doubt about it. They're the ones. Good. I want to thank you folks for doing your duty as citizens, taxpayers, and voters. <laughs> Take them back to jail. Book them. Well, boys, I, I guess we can stop the play acting. You ready to confess? We haven't got nothing to confess, Sheriff. Well, you heard the people. Mr. Johnson will testify in court that you stuck up the bank. And we got you on a breaking, entering, and attempting. I wouldn't go near an old bag like that if I was alone with her in a of desert. Of course, they've seen us before, and they heard us before, every week on a TV set. I'm satisfied with their identification, and the court will be too. But I'd like to save the county a lot of time and money, and you could make it a lot easier on yourself by just giving me a full confession. Now you can save yourself a false arrest suit by letting us go. On your own, say so? No, you got our fingerprints. Why don't you send them to Washington? We don't need to help the FBI in this county. We solve our own crime. Excuse me, Sheriff. Yes, Sam? He just brought in body that girl. Here's her purse. Yes, there's no doubt she was the one who drove the getaway car. She was carrying $2,500 of the bank's money in this purse. See? Mm, sure. That's one-third of the stolen money. What'd you do with your cut, boy? Oh, knock it off. Hey, wait wait a minute. Look, Joe. What? Our wallets. Look, she had our wallets in her purse. What? Your hands off yeah. that stuff. Well, well, look at them, Sheriff. You'll find our driver's licenses and our all sorts of ID cards. Mm, sure, this is Joe Harris. Well, that won't prove a thing. You've been identified by the victim. Oh, but Sheriff! Uh, yes? Your wife's outside, Sheriff. Well, tell her I... Uh, uh, Oh, no, that wouldn't be any good. I'm afraid not, sir. She's on her way in. Elmo, why didn't you tell me you were entertaining celebrities? Huh? Clarabelle Froiling hasn't called me. Oh, poor thing. She's all confused when she was down here. She was sure she'd seen him somewhere before. And after she got home, she realized where? On TV. Well... Aren't you going to introduce me? Yeah, now, look here, Ellie. I'm very busy. Oh, and don't got... bother. I'd recognize him anywhere. 
you're Joe Harris. That's right, ma'am. And you're Charlie Bloom. Yes, ma'am. Oh, my, this is an honor. Here, Elmo, Elmo, give me a piece of paper and a pencil. Yes, sir. Oh, there. Now, would you please give me your autograph? Oh, I'd be delighted. You don't know how delighted, ma'am. Well, what brings you to our fair city? Uh, your husband. Why didn't you tell me, Elmo? We could have had a parade and a civic celebration. Oh, but it's not too late for an impromptu reception, at least. I'm afraid we couldn't make it, ma'am. You see, we're under arrest. Arrest? What for? Your husband thinks we're bank robbers, yeah, ma'am. He wants to send us to prison for the rest of our lives. Elmo, have you lost your mind? Don't you know that these two gentlemen are famous actors? Not until now. We tried to tell him. Do you want to make yourself the laughing stock of Jackrabbit County? And just before election, too? No. Well, you let them go this instant. But, Ellie, how can I be sure? Just that... take my word for it. Oh, honest, I don't know what would become of you if it weren't for me. Yes, Ellie. Well, boys, here's your wallets. I guess you can go. Oh, my goodness, I don't know how I can make this up to you. But I'd be tickled pink if you'd come out to the house for supper. Well, thank you, ma'am, but we're in sort of a hurry. Yeah, you see, see we got to make a picture in Hollywood, and we're a little late. Well, don't forget us. <laughs> I uh, don't think that's possible, ma'am. And when you come back again this way, do drop in to see us. Yes, ma'am. We'll think about that, ma'am. We'll think a long time about that. Suspense. In which William Conrad and Charles McGraw starred in Two for the Road. Written, produced, and directed by William N. Robeson. In just a moment, the names of the supporting players and a word about next week's story of suspense. <laughs> Of all reading filters, cigarettes, Kent filters best, Kent filters best. It makes good sense when you smoke Kent, Kent filters best. Of all of the brands of cigarettes, Kent tastes the best, Kent tastes the best. A richer taste than all the rest, Kent filters best. Supporting Mr. Conrad and Mr. McGraw in Two for the Road were Paula Winslow, June Foray, Howard McNear, Evan Thompson, Barney Phillips, Sam Pierce, and Jack Crucian. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Every Sunday night, Mitch Miller stars on the CBS Radio Network. Thank you.